join us tonight as we worship God together. And, um, you know, I'm just so grateful that we serve a God who is able to resurrect all sorts of things. He resurrected us. He can resurrect situations and circumstances and our world. He can resurrect our world and turn things around. And so we worship with us tonight as we sing.
Welcome back to our series on uh, learning to follow Jesus. Right now we're talking about um, learning to listen, which I think is, again, so very important. And some of the the conversations we're going to have over the next, well, over the previous weeks and over the next coming weeks are going to sound, or sessions, probably not weeks, you don't necessarily have to take uh, weeks and weeks and weeks to do this, especially if you're watching it um, after the first playing, Uh, you know, we're, they're going to sound repetitive because we're going to go over it and over and again. But here's the thing I have found. I've, I've been a Christian my whole life. I mean, I was, I was born, <laughs> I was almost born in church, right? And so I've been around church my whole life and uh, made a very early commitment to Jesus and have been uh, in church. I've been a pastor for 20 plus years. I went to Bible college. I have a I have a degree from two different seminaries. I've got a master's and a doctorate from two different seminaries, right? And so I, I know Jesus. I know a, a lot of stuff about Jesus. Um, but here's the thing that I have to tell you that we can never forget 
in our relationship with Jesus. And, and really, it's, it's, I'll, I'll highlight a scripture that really tells me, or tells us that. Um, it, it, we can never forget the foundational things, right? We can never forget the foundational elements of our relationship with Jesus the same way that we can never forget the, what seems like basic stuff. We can never forget that because if we forget to do the basics, then the the advanced stuff doesn't matter, right? It doesn't it doesn't matter if you remember how to do if you do if you can only do the advanced work on stuff. Um, and I actually I didn't have this this verse planned for tonight or for t- right this moment, but I think it's a- appropriate um, talking about. It's just a, a great reminder because you know the Apostle Paul wrote uh, uh, the majority of the books in the New Testament. Um, he, he says this in 1 Corinthians chapter 13. He says, If I speak in the tongues of men and angels, and we'll talk about that more in one of our later sessions, but do not have love, I am only a resounding gong or clanging cymbal. If I have the gift of prophecy and can fathom all mysteries and all knowledge, and if I have faith that can move mountains but do not have love, I am nothing, nothing. If I give all I possess to the poor and give over my body to hardship that I may boast, but do not have love, I gain nothing. And then he continues on in 1 Corinthians 13 to describe what love looks like. But here's here's the point I'm trying to make, is that love is the foundation to our relationship. And so if you have uh, higher spiritual gifts that he refers to, the t- gifts of prophecy, tongues, and all those kind of things. If you experience those, but you do not love, then those things don't mean anything. What's he saying? If you don't get the foundation right, then the big advanced stuff doesn't matter. And that goes along to the verse that I've asked you guys to, that I've asked for this session on learning to listen, um, to kind of work on memorizing. That's And that's Matthew chapter 7, verse 24 to 25. And here's what it says. Therefore, everyone who hears... These words of mine and puts them into practice is like a wise man who built his house on the rock. The rain came down, the streams rose, and the wind blew and beat against the house and did not fall because it had its foundation on the rock. If we don't have our foundation in the right spot, it doesn't matter how much we know about God. It doesn't matter how much we think we understand. If we don't have the foundation the right place, then the house will fall. And so we as believers uh, need to keep in mind something very important. Our foundation has to be firm. And this is one of the things I want to encourage you as we talk about listening, is that we need to learn how to listen, but we need to learn to go to the source. Um, you cannot, now I, I, we, we as a church and I as a pastor preach biblical messages. Um, you will find I use a lot of scripture when I preach. And I don't just use like one little portion of a verse. I might use f- four or five verses to give the context. And then I might use a whole chapter. You know, we do a lot of it. Why? Because I want you to understand what the verse means in context and what it means in our life. But a lot of people never read the Bible for themselves. They never pray for themselves. They just Trust the word of other people. And what this has done is it has led to a whole group of people that know parts of the Bible, but they take it out of context. They don't know what it actually means in reference to what it intended in the place it was written, the time it was written. They don't know what it means in the portion of the book that it was written. They don't understand it. They just, what they're doing is they're regurgitating information from somebody else. And they, they, they oftentimes regurgitate the wrong information because they've taken the verse out of the wrong place. And so 2 Timothy tells us this. 2 Timothy is powerful. Uh, here's what it says in uh, verse, in chapter 2. No. Yeah. Chapter 2, I'm sorry, I got I got myself confused. 2 Timothy uh, chapter 3, I'm sorry, chapter 3, um, verse 16 and 17, it says this. All scripture is God-breathed and is useful for teaching, rebuking, correcting, and training in righteousness, so that the servant of God may be thoroughly equipped for every good work. 
Let me read that again. Second, it's it's Second Timothy chapter three, verse sixteen and seventeen. It says, "All Scripture is God breathed and useful for teaching, rebuking, correcting, and training in righteousness, so that the servant of God may be thoroughly equipped for every good work." You know, it's God breathed. It means it's inspired by God, and so. Um, if you if you look at that portion of scripture, let me ask you this question. In what way, and I want you to write this down, in what way does the passage say that scripture can help you? What's it say? Think about that for a moment. I'll, I will pause while we think about it. All right, that's long enough. <laughs> uh, that's, the, that's the challenge with video. I, you, I, I can't fill those blank spaces. What's it say? It says it's useful for teaching rebuking, correcting, and training. If that's what you wrote down, good job. But, you know, rebuking and teaching, correcting and training, those are essential in our lives. But uh, we don't necessarily want somebody to say, well, you know, here's, here's my favorite, like favorite misquoted Bible thing. It says, well, you know, the Bible tells us that if uh, God closes a door, he opens a window. That sounds spiritual, right? It's not. It's Mother Superior from uh, The Sound of Music. Uh, or maybe this one, you know, cleanliness is next to godliness. That's that's not true, right? God helps those who help themselves. Ooh, that sounds good, right? That was Benjamin Franklin that said that one. You know, if, if we don't go to the source for understanding Scripture, then we never have the opportunity to apply it correctly. And that's the hard thing in our lives, is that if we don't apply the Word of God correctly, we can find ourselves at the end of our life going, well, Lord, Lord, didn't we serve you? Didn't we do this? Didn't we do that? And he'll go, depart from, depart from me. I didn't know you. And that's why uh, 2 Timothy chapter 2 is important. Chapter 2 uh, in verse 15, it says this, do your best to present yourself to God as one approved, a worker who does not need to be ashamed and who correctly handles the word of truth. You know, we need to learn how to go to the source because that's where we hear the voice of God. Reading the Bible, again, like I said, it's going to sound repetitive, but here's my encouragement for you. Um, Have you figured out a way to incorporate daily Bible reading into your life? Now, there's plenty of ways to do it. On your phone, you can develop a Bible reading plan through the uh, the Bible app. You can go to Bible.com. You can find a daily devotional. You can find all sorts of ways to do it. But have you, have you figured out a way to make Scripture part of your daily life? Uh, do you understand what Jesus is saying in those moments? You know, when it says to study, literally it means study. Understand it, grow in it. But you can't just study somebody else's thoughts on what God is saying. And so as we're talking about learning to go to the source, again, start with Jesus, reveal yourself in these scriptures. Jesus, help me understand what it is you're saying. And then allow the Holy Spirit to speak to you. You know, you have you probably have a study Bible uh, at somewhere at home. I was a, I, I love the, the full life study Bible, which I think now is called the living in the spirit study Bible. It's a good, great study Bible. Um, but sometimes there's a temptation when you read the Bible with a study Bible, you read the notes first. Don't read the notes first. Read the, read the passage. Ask Jesus, what is it that you're speaking to me in this moment? Then you can go back and read the notes Sometimes it's helpful because you find out, oh, wait, maybe I was wrong. (laughs) Maybe I didn't hear that. But you know what? Sometimes God's trying to speak something to you specifically. And we drown it out with the voice of others. Learn to go to the source. And I'm not just saying learn to go to the Bible. The Bible's hugely important. But learn to allow Jesus and the Holy Spirit to speak to you. Incorporate it into your daily life. Make scriptures part of your moment by moment. Make a plan on how you're going to do it. And then allow that teaching, correcting, rebuking, uh, and, and, and to training to d- develop you and grow you. Um, I can't emphasize enough the importance of reading the Bible, especially in today's culture and society. Because today's culture and society will take the word of God and twist it to suit their needs. I have, I have heard the word of God twisted to suit um, diametrically opposed people. 
People that are not together, not on the same page, will use the Bible to support their position. But here's the thing, is the Bible does not contradict itself. So you can't use the Bible to say something it didn't say. But the only way you know that the Bible isn't saying that is by knowing what the Bible said. And this might not be a hugely deep thought, but I want to encourage you. Don't just take somebody's word on what the Bible says. I sat in a Bible college class one time. This will be my last little story here. Uh, Dr. Tim Jenny was teaching the class. And um, we're sitting there. I was, I was a freshman. Um, and I'm sitting there and listening to the class. And um, about halfway through the class, somebody raised their hand and said, Hey, Dr. Jenny, I don't, I don't know that I agree with what you just said. And uh, Dr. Jenny said, well, why didn't, don't you agree with it? And he goes, well, I don't think that's what the Bible says. And he quotes a verse and, and uh, there's a student that's responding. I wish I could tell you it was me, but it was not me. Um, I was just in the class. And uh, Dr. Jenny says, congratulations, you get an A for the day um, because this whole class I have been teaching you half truths. I didn't teach you what the Word of God said. I taught you something that sounded like what the Word of God said, but it wasn't actually what God's Word said. The Bible tells us that in the last days, there will be a great falling away uh, from the church because people will be led astray by false teachers. The only way you avoid getting led astray by false teachers is by knowing what the Bible actually teaches, by what the Bible actually says. I want you to have a firm foundation that we talked about with Matthew, uh, those that hear the word and do it. What's, Therefore, everyone who hears the word of mine and puts them into practice is like a wise man who built his house on the rock. The rain came down, the stream rose, and the winds blew and beat against that house. Yet it did not fall because it had its foundation on the rock. God's word will never contradict itself. And the Holy Spirit, when he speaks, will never contradict the word of God. A biblically firm pastor will never contradict the word of God. And so we have to know the source in order to truly learn how to listen. So God bless you. Thanks for being here. Let me pray for you. Father, I pray right now that you help us remain connected to the source and to listen to the source and to hear your voice, to hear your voice and to lay that firm foundation in our lives. Teach us how to listen. Teach us how to be connected to the source. In your name, amen. God bless you. Thanks for being here. Have a great day.